Hello, and welcome to our session. I'm Kamala Desika, Director of Product Marketing for Cloud Native on Azure. And I'm Devanshi Joshi, Product Marketing Manager for Serverless on Azure. Today, we're going to talk about driving application innovation and modernization at scale with Cloud Native architectures. When we talk about Cloud Native, we're referring to technologies and development patterns that empower organizations to build and run scalable applications quickly. The speed and agility of Cloud Native is made possible by some foundational pillars. Modern architectures like microservices or composite applications deployed in containers, using an API-first approach for your apps, infrastructure, and data, all the while taking advantage of DevOps and automation on infrastructure you can count on to be elastic. Azure Kubernetes Service brings all these together, making it easier to deploy and manage cloud-native applications, leading to some great business outcomes and savings for our customers. For example, you may have enjoyed playing the game Forza Horizon, but you probably didn't know that the Forza team and AKS flawlessly handled 10 million concurrent players at launch, the biggest first week in Xbox Game Studios history. Relativity, a global market leader in legal e-discovery and compliance software, can deploy new features and vulnerability fixes on the same day, as opposed to six months later. And Elvia, a Norwegian energy company built a secure DevOps platform to safely serve the needs of their 2 million customers. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Ash Patel from Commercial Bank of California to share the successes they've had with their cloud native journey. Thank you, Kamala, for inviting me to the Microsoft Ignite conference. It's an honor and a, and a privilege to be discussing this with you guys. Hi, my name is Ash Patel, President and CEO Chairman of the Board of Commercial Bank of California, or a $2 billion business bank that is extremely focused on client experience and fintech innovation. Historically, banking's foundation is in relationships, technology's foundation is in innovations. We're bringing the two together with our ACH payment processing company, Verichuk VCI, for our next phase of growth. We're always going to be a bank, but the future of our companies is in fintech and payments. Verichuk is the backbone of that initiative. In fact, Verichuk is experiencing robust growth in its payment processing business, and we knew it was time to build a new platform that was scalable, stable, and secure, so we could reach our long-term goals. We reviewed several cloud solutions to host our new payments platform and support our major growth challenges. During the search, we sought a reputable partner, an innovating as fast as we are, strong brand that could truly be a partner with us. Not only did Microsoft Azure check all those boxes, but the team had the synergies with our business and the culture and brought us a great roadmap for our partnership. Once we partnered with Microsoft, our Verichuk and Infogain teams together began building an enterprise premium processing solution on Azure that could support our growth and demand. ACH transactions are relatively common, but it's a bank-to-bank -bank transfer automated through technology. We're differentiating ourselves with the latest technology that automates transfers within seconds safely and securely. We want to truly leverage Azure Cloud for the capacity that was a key driver behind the architecture of the platform. Our platform on Azure will handle 18 million transactions per year. However, we're planning to scale the company and the platform to process 10 times more than that. Azure has the capability to meet those goals and the stability to process over $75 billion in transaction and the security to keep our company and our clients safe. We believe trust is a currency and currency comes from performance. That is why it was important that Azure had a tokenized end-to-end -end encryption for the payments to protect the identities of the transactions of our customers. That is why we are leading the way with one of our first payment platforms on Azure. We are proud to partner with this team and pioneer the payment industry into a new direction of stability, scalability, and security. I would like to thank Kamala for inviting me and giving me a few minutes of their time during this Ignite conference. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Now that we've heard about what's already possible, let's take a look at what else the team is working on to help our customers do more with less. 
we're continuing to address common challenges developers are facing around managing distributed clusters, getting actionable telemetry for their applications, adding new capabilities to bring sensitive resources into the cloud with confidence, and much more. Here's George Palma to take us through the details. Thanks, Kamala. Now, for users that have hundreds or thousands of AKS clusters, managing these clusters at scale and orchestrating cross-cluster scenarios can be hard. With many duplicative tasks and a lot of custom configuration required to spread applications across clusters. So today, we're excited to announce the public preview of Azure Fleet Manager to address these multi-cluster challenges at scale. You can now create a Kubernetes fleet and join your new and existing AKS clusters as member clusters, and subsequently use the fleet to centrally operate them. Platform admins often operate a lot of Kubernetes clusters where they configure namespaces for developer teams. The configuration propagation capability of fleet will enable the platform admin to create fleet configurations and then granularly control how these configurations are propagated to the member clusters. The fleet control plane is a fully managed AKS cluster itself, so users don't have to worry about upgrades, maintenance, or the settings for this cluster. Furthermore, you can now set up L4 load balancing with endpoints in different clusters and leverage namespace and service sameness to effectively deploy the same application at scale across clusters or regions. The Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager has a rich roadmap over the coming months that includes L7 load balancing, multi-cluster service mesh, fleet level identity federation, at scale lifecycle management, the Azure service operator fully integrated with it, and support for ARC enabled Kubernetes clusters to be member clusters wherever they are in the cloud or at the edge. Another key challenge when running at scale is observability and monitoring. And so we're very happy to announce the public preview of Azure Monitor Managed Service for Prometheus. Prometheus is the most popular open source container monitoring technology, but self-hosting it can be cumbersome and challenging, requiring, for example, that you handle scaling, versioning, and updating. The new Azure Monitor Managed Service for Prometheus marries the best of the open source ecosystem with the built-in security, scalability, and high availability from Azure Monitor. Our Managed Ruler service performs Prometheus-compatible alert and recording rule evaluations and supports prompt QL expressions, custom labels, templated annotations, and much more. Finally, you can leverage your existing Refina dashboards to visualize the data in the now generally available Azure Managed Refina service. Now, at Inspire, Satya announced the general availability of confidential virtual machines utilizing third generation AMD EPIC processors. AKS is first to market in enabling AMD SEV SNP confidential VM notepools in Kubernetes, adding defense in depth to Azure's hardened security profile. Organizations can now seamlessly lift and shift Linux containers to confidential VM notepools without any code refactoring and minimal performance degradation, and while benefit from all of AKS's feature richness. You can get started today in any region that supports confidential SKUs. Now, for an overview demo of all of these news, let's go to Shishank. Thank you, George. Now, let's start with Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager. We start by navigating to Kubernetes Fleet Manager, then to Create, and then we fill the details like name and resource group of the fleet. We can now choose any existing AKS clusters as member clusters to the fleet. We now see that the three AKS clusters are joined as member clusters to the fleet. One of the goals of Fleet is to enable you to treat a set of clusters more like a single cluster. So we chose to expose Fleet operations through Kubernetes itself. To get started, we'll need access to this Fleet cluster. Before Fleet, we observed that the platform admins created AKS clusters and then manually created namespaces on these clusters so that they can then hand them over to their application teams. With Fleet and its Kubernetes configuration propagation capabilities, we want to help the platform admins automate these tasks. We now create a demo namespace on the hub cluster. Fleet allows you to apply cluster resource placement to control selection of cluster scope resources and to define how they get propagated to member clusters. You can select Kubernetes resources on the hub either by name or by label selectors. You can similarly pick out the target clusters either by name or label selectors. This example picks out the demo namespace of hub 
by name and places it on member one and member two clusters. We observe that the cluster resource placement has propagated demo namespace to member one and member two clusters, but not to member three cluster. We now create a deployment, a service, and a service export object for our demo app. The service export object exports out the service and endpoints from one member cluster to the other member clusters in the hub. We now verify on the member clusters that the deployment and other objects did indeed get propagated wherever demo namespace existed. Now let's create a multi-cluster service to set up L4 north-south load balancing across our demo app service on multiple clusters. We check the status of the multi-cluster service and obtain its external IP. We enter this IP in our browser and access the demo app. If we keep refreshing this page, we observe that the requests are now being served by multiple pods from multiple clusters. And hence, we are able to successfully establish the L4 north-south load balancing across these endpoints. Now let's see how we can monitor these clusters. For each of these clusters, we navigate to the Insights tab, click on Configure, and we get the option of choosing between creating new Azure Monitor and Grafana workspaces or to use existing ones. We choose these workspaces and click on Configure. Now you can navigate to the linked Grafana workspace and start exploring metrics from these clusters. Under Dashboards Browse, we find a bunch of pre-built dashboards available under the Manage Prometheus folder. Let's open the one on compute resources of the cluster. Here we can just switch the cluster toggle and see the equivalent metrics from all these clusters. Now let's see how we can deploy some confidential compute workloads across these clusters. For that, we have created a node pool of confidential VM SKU on each of these member clusters. In our deployment, we target the workload to be deployed only on the nodes with this confidential VM SKU. We then apply this deployment in the demo namespace of hub cluster which will result in the deployment getting propagated only to member one and member two clusters. On one of these clusters, we exec into the pod to run the attestation client. We now copy the base64 encoded attestation report and decode it to check out the JSON contents of this report. Here we see that the attestation type is SCV SNP VM and that the compliance status is Azure compliant CVM. This verifies that we are indeed running a confidential attested pod. And that's all for the demo. Over to you, George. Thank you, Shashank. Continuing on the security theme, I am thrilled to announce the preview availability of Mariner Linux as a container host for AKS. Mariner is a fully open source Linux operating system purpose built by Microsoft to run container workloads and is optimized for AKS. Additionally, Mariner is also the default Linux distribution for AKS hybrid deployment options enabled by Azure Arc, giving users a consistent environment regardless of where they run AKS. Like Mariner, the breadth of AKS functionality and cloud-native tools can be extended and deployed to popular environments and provides organizations with enterprise security capabilities to deploy containers at scale. As you heard Satya announce, we're excited to bring new AKS hybrid deployment options enabled by Azure Arc that run your containerized managed Kubernetes applications across Azure, on-premises, and at the edge. You can now deploy and manage AKS on Windows devices, Windows IoT, Windows Server, and Azure Stack HCI, all from the Azure portal. If you have ever used the Azure portal or Azure CLI to create and manage AKS clusters, you will feel right at home using AKS in your data center or at the edge. Back to you, Kamala. Thank you, George. Most organizations have diverse IT investments because of organic growth and acquisitions. Cloud native applications often don't get a fresh start and need to be deployed into these complex environments. Whether you need a service mesh for your microservices or you're researching an incident and orchestrating a response across distributed teams, an ecosystem of tools that supports your end-to-end -end journey is critical. Microsoft Cloud Marketplace provides a variety of technologies for teams to integrate with their apps. And now we have some exciting updates on how AKS customers can quickly and safely leverage these offerings. Here's Kavitha Gowda to take us through it. Thanks, Kamala. With the goal to provide a rich Kubernetes ecosystem for AKS customers, we are launching Kubernetes apps offering in Microsoft Cloud Marketplace. Partners can provide vetted solution and AKS customer can self-serve Kubernetes apps 
from their preferred procurement channel in Microsoft Cloud Marketplace. We are prioritizing reusable packaging and speed to market for our partners. Partners can bring their existing application Helm charts and bundle easily with our ARM template to publish their Kubernetes ads offer. Enter an automation with multi-level validation and vulnerability checks enable partners to publish their offer under 48 hours through the Microsoft Partner Center. As a transactable offer, we have released core usage-based billing model in public preview. Users can now explore and deploy Kubernetes apps from Marketplace with easy one-click deployment and enable lifecycle management of these applications. Customers can also view the usage and billing of Kubernetes apps in Microsoft cost management along with other Azure resources. Enterprise customers can now apply their Azure benefits towards procurement of Kubernetes apps from the marketplace, meeting Azure consumption commitment. Let's see what that looks like. If you're a Microsoft Cloud Marketplace partner, you can now log into Partner Center and create Kubernetes application solution for your customers. We'll take you through the key journey in your offer creation. We have enabled new container offering category in which resides Kubernetes apps offering. Select this category to kick off Kubernetes offer workflow. As you can see, we have primary category of containers and subcategory of Kubernetes apps. Kubernetes application offer is a transactable offer where you as a partner can select the pricing models for your solution. At present, we are releasing with core based building model, but in short turnaround, we plan to release more pricing models based on nodes, parts, etc., with long-term pricing and custom metering. Once you define your pricing policy, next major step is to upload your solutions. Kubernetes apps offer solution encompasses Helm charts, ARM templates, UI definition file for UI inputs, all of which is bundled with CNAP bundle. We accept any solution that can be wrapped in Helm charts to make it easy to port. Through end-to-end -end automation, we aim to provide 48 hours turnaround from partners submitting to publishing the offer. For customer safety, we employ multi-level security scanning and vulnerability checks. As Azure Kubernetes customers, you can view all Kubernetes apps offer in Microsoft Cloud Marketplace by searching for Kubernetes app in search bar. You do the same in Azure Marketplace portal view. I here have opened Minecraft Kubernetes app offer before in hand, and it is that easy to self-serve by just clicking a single button, create. I select the AKS cluster to deploy the solution and fill in few parameter that solution needs and finish reviewing before create. It's that simple. For our customers, we aim to provide vetted Kubernetes solution, both partners from partners and open source ecosystem. Also, we aim to provide easy deployments, lifecycle management, integrated billing, and procurement of your software through the established Microsoft Cloud Marketplace procurement channel. You can see the deployment is now complete. We'll go to AKS cluster and get the Minecraft server IP. Let's go to the AKS cluster. Here, as you can see, Minecraft is deployed. Copy the IP address and let's start playing Minecraft. Let's add the server IP address and hola, the Minecraft is ready. I just want to quickly call out that you can also look at your usage and billing of your Kubernetes app solution for Marketplace in Azure Cost Management. Now let's go to Brian Basalt, Head of Engineering at Tetrate, one of our partners, to share with us their Kubernetes apps experience. Thanks, Kavitha. Hello, Ignite. My name is Brian Duso, and I'm Head of Engineering at Tetrate, an enterprise service mesh company. I want to welcome you all to this session. My goal is to help you quickly build mesh-enabled applications using Tetrate's Istio distribution on Azure. Now, before we dig into the developer experience, I want to share some background on how you can leverage an enterprise service mesh to simplify operations of modern distributed applications. Developers building distributed systems have a number of architectural considerations to address to ensure they achieve the velocity and agility promised by microservices. Microservices need to be secure by default. Application to application connectivity needs to be faster 
and safer in these highly dynamic environments. And this interconnectivity needs to be more resilient than ever. Developers also need detailed telemetry from both applications and infrastructure so they can troubleshoot and reason about their systems. Now, service meshes are the foundation of cloud native architectures and move all of these cross cutting concerns out of the application dependencies and into a platform freeing developers to focus on business logic. The service mesh accomplishes these tasks by moving these cross cutting features to sidecars that run with your application. Now you can see in the diagram that we are running an instance of Envoy Proxy as a sidecar beside each of the applications in this microservice architecture. The service mesh is responsible for managing all of these sidecars across the solution. Now Istio is an open source service mesh implementation that addresses all of these cross cutting concerns. And Tetrate's Istio distribution is the easiest way to install and operate uh, and upgrade Istio. Now, Azure customers expect to find, try, and buy container services through the curated enterprise-grade marketplace. And at Tetrate, we're able to rapidly onboard our service by simply reusing our existing Helm chart investments to quickly deliver Azure users with a familiar and trusted marketplace experience. We are excited to announce that Tetrate Istio distribution is now available in the marketplace. So let's jump over there and check out how easy it is to get started. Start by selecting the Tetrate Istio plan. Next, we'll create a new resource group called Tetrate Demo 1. And we'll create an AKS cluster, Tetrate Demo Cluster, and choose a Kubernetes version. Next, enter the name of the extended resource, which is going to be Tetrate Demo Resource. And we're going to select the Istio version. And we also support FIPS distribution. Okay, next. Then we're going to review and create the cluster. Our Zero will then handle the deployment of the Tetrate Istio cluster, and you are up and running with your Istio cluster on AKS in minutes. Beyond getting Istio up and running, Tetrate offers online learning in a complete platform to solve day two Istio challenges like managing security, service availability, and delivering a developer experience in these complex production environments. So if you want to operate Istio at scale, you can learn more at tetrate.io. Back to you, team Microsoft. Thank you, Brian. Cloud native applications are typically deployed using DevOps style development, relying on automation for continuous integration and delivery. Azure, GitHub, and the Visual Studio family of developer tools provide customers with an end-to-end -end DevOps solution to take their code and deploy on the cloud or edge. We've all heard about the need to incorporate security checks earlier in the development lifecycle. With GitHub, developers can scan code as it's created to get accurate, actionable security reviews within the developer workflow. This way, they can confidently deploy apps using their favorite languages and frameworks, such as .NET or Java, as containers. The express goal for using cloud-native technologies is to abstract the infrastructure from developers as freeing them to focus on building more cloud-optimized applications. Serverless computing is an exciting manifestation of this. Here's Daria Gregorio to take us through it. Thank you, Kamala. Azure Container Apps is built for serverless containers and optimized for managed microservices. Azure Container Apps is focused on productivity, from streamlined deployment to the cloud, to leveraging microservices best practices and seamless microservices components integration. Here are investments coming soon across these areas. Streamline AZ Container App up code to cloud onboarding without the need for a Docker file. Next, protocols for different application needs, including TCP, for communicating between container apps or exposing a TCP port from a container app. Also, added flexibility for securing your apps with both the Dapper Secrets API over industry favorite stores and seamless passwordless support for using Dapper with managed identities. For a demo, let's go to Kendall. Thanks, Daria. Hi, 
I'm Kendall Roden, one of the product managers for Azure Container Apps. I'm excited to walk you through some of the new capabilities that we're bringing to the platform. Let's take a quick look at the new AZ Container App Up support for deploying from source code without a Docker file. Here we can see I have an API project and I remove the Docker file from the source code repository altogether. I can then run an AZ Container App Up command, including information about the container app I'd like to deploy, including the name, album API, the resource group I'd like this app to be provisioned in, and the location. Lastly, I provide a path to the source code on my local machine. This could also point to a GitHub repository. Upon execution, I see immediately a resource group and a container apps environment are being created. A log analytics workspace is also provisioned to act as the logging backend for my environment. We'll also see commands and output from the remote build that's happening to take the source code and create a container image. The container image is stored in Azure Container Registry and subsequently deployed as a container app to the container apps environment. I can check the log output to show that the container app successfully is running in Azure. Next up, I can easily update my app to enable public access. You see here I enable ingress on the album API targeting port 8080. I see the album API is instantly available over HTTPS and the albums are successfully retrieved. Now let's take a look at a more advanced scenario. We'll be using the album API, but a version that's been instrumented with Dapper. We've added a second Dapper enabled microservice, which will use Dapper service invocation API to invoke the backend. Upon invocation, the backend API will retrieve a list of albums using Dapper's state management capabilities. Here, we can see the payload that's returned to the web app for users to view. With support for TCP on the horizon, customers can use TCP for ingress, scale out based on TCP connections, and perform traffic splitting with TCP. In this case, they can even run a local Redis instance in the environment for dev test scenarios. Let's look at this in action. Here we can see a resource group that has a virtual network connected environment and three container apps, one of which is Redis. The entire solution was deployed via GitHub Action Automation using Azure Bicep. We can take a look at the Redis container app and see the input parameter used to set the transport for this container app to TCP. We can also take a quick peek at the Dapper State Store component, which eliminates any Redis specific code from the app and establishes the connection to the local Redis using the hostname and port. A quick peek at the album viewer front end will give us an indication if the entire solution is up and running. We can also use the log streaming capability within the album API to confirm that six albums were in fact retrieved successfully from the Dapper State Store. We can use the container app's console connect experience to connect to the Redis container app from within the environment. Using the Redis CLI, we're able to confirm that the state was stored and retrieved from the locally running Redis instance. In production scenarios, we recommend storing state external to the environment. This next demo will swap out the Dapper state store to point instead to Azure storage. Thanks to Dapper, no code changes required. With Dapper support for managed identity, we could use managed identity to give the album API access to the backing storage account. Alternatively, we could use a Dapper secret store, which will securely source secrets for the state store component. In this demo, Dapper will use a managed identity to connect to Key Vault, and the state store component will reference this to retrieve secret values. In this deployment, we can see the album API and album viewer still exist. The Redis container app is no longer present because instead we'll use Dapper to connect to Azure Storage. We see a new Dapper component called Secret Store, which contains a reference to the name of the backing Key Vault and the client ID of the album API managed identity. We can also see the state store was created with a reference to the secret store in order to retrieve the connection information for Azure Storage. With the managed identity assigned the appropriate permissions and assigned to the container app itself, we're able to confirm in the log stream that the albums were successfully retrieved, this time from Azure Storage. Deploying microservices using best practices has never been easier thanks to the power of Dapper and Azure Container Apps. Thanks for watching. As we all know, the only thing better than watching a demo is actually getting hands on yourself. We're excited to continue bringing new features and capabilities that empower you to best use the Azure Container Apps platform. Building applications goes beyond development. Most apps may not require deeper control or operations management. Apps of the future are cloud native and help you focus on productivity with serverless to accelerate time to market or production. Application solutions that are event-driven, 
reacting to triggers in near real time with virtually unlimited scalability, are a perfect fit for serverless architectures. The best part is that with serverless compute, you only pay for when your code runs. Microsoft's flagship functions as a service offering, Azure Functions, further extends serverless productivity to full stack modern apps with Azure static web apps. Now we'll go back to Daria to talk about the latest advancements in Azure static web apps. Thank you, Devanshi. Azure Static Web Apps is a great choice for modern web apps offering streamlined, full-stack development from source code to global high availability. We deliver zero-config deployment based on code changes, distribute your web content globally, support routing, authentication, and authorization, custom domains and free certificates, API integration, and more. To deliver seamless experiences, we learn about the frameworks that matter to you and build that insight into the hosting service. Next.js is the latest framework to be onboarded with support for server-side rendering, incremental static regeneration, API routes, advanced image compression, and Next.js auth. I'm going to invite Thomas to show us how it works. Thanks, Daria. When building Next.js applications, a static site export is a great way to host these on Azure Static Web Apps. But sometimes we want to benefit from server-side optimizations to prioritize faster page loads. Here, we have a Next.js e-commerce application with a static site export. When I refresh the page, the Next.js app loads without the information of the items, so it has to make a separate network call. This adds time before users can see the final web page. Recently, we announced that you can host Next.js server-side rendered application on Azure Static Web Apps. With server-side rendering, pages will come preloaded with information rather than having to fetch it separately. Let's improve our e-commerce site with Next.js optimizations. Within our Next.js application, we can decide to render our items page on the server by adding get server-side props to that Next.js page. We can also benefit from Next.js features such as image optimizations. With this improvement, we can see that users see the final page quicker, especially on slower connections. This also helps improve search engine indexing. With Next.js server-side rendering on Azure Static Web Apps, you can take full advantage of Next.js features such as server-side rendering, incremental static regeneration, and image optimizations, along with Azure Static Web Apps' own powerful features such as out-of-the-box preview environments, private endpoint support, enterprise-grade edge, and more. Thank you, Thomas. To support a variety of full-stack modern web apps, Azure Static Web Apps includes multiple options for APIs. You can power your APIs with fully managed Azure functions. Just bring your code, and the Azure Static Web App service will take care of building and provisioning the functions for you. You can also link existing APIs for easy reuse. When linked, any request to a route prefixed with API is routed to your backend resource. You no longer need to worry about integration points like cross origin resource sharing or cores. We also deliver end to end authentication for a seamless experience across front end and back end. We now support multiple API types, including Azure Functions, Azure Container Apps, Azure App Service Web Apps, and Azure API Management. For a demo on this, let's go back to Thomas. Thanks, Daria. Azure Static Web Apps makes it really easy to create a serverless API using the integrated Azure Functions. But often, we have existing APIs that we want to reuse within our app. Here, we have a front end hosted on Azure Static Web Apps, calling an API hosted on Azure API Management. This works, but because they're hosted separately, we have to make sure cores is configured correctly in API management, and we can't make use of Static Web Apps features such as authentication and authorization. Recently, Azure Static Web Apps added built-in support for integrating with existing APIs that are hosted in Azure. Let's add our existing Azure API to our Static Web App. To link an API management instance to my Static Web App resource, I'll simply select the resource within the API's blade. 
Now I can change my network calls in my code to make it to the relative slash API endpoint of my static web app. With this change, my app calls the slash API endpoint of the static web app, which routes it automatically to my API management instance. Because the endpoint is on the same domain as my static web app, we don't need to configure cores, and we can leverage the powerful static web app features such as managed authentication and authorization. In this case, I added a policy to my API management instance to check for the existence of the login header. Now, if a user tries to check their card page without having logged in first, they'll receive a 401. With API integrations for Azure Static Web Apps, your applications are more secure and you benefit from a better development experience across your Azure services. Today, Static Web Apps supports container apps, Azure App Service, Azure API Management, and dedicated Azure functions as backend API options. Back to you, Daria. Azure Serverless is the platform built for next-gen apps today, supporting all ecosystem integrations highlighted here. Azure Serverless not only accelerates cloud-native application development, but also boosts developer productivity. With functions as a service at the core of Serverless, Azure Functions offers the best-in-class inner loop and outer loop serverless developer experience. Azure Functions released a new programming model for development in Python, now in preview. This programming model will enable customers to create function applications with ease, leaning towards fewer function concepts and instead emphasizing Python principles. Using the new model provides an easier import experience, includes a simplified folder structure, and is supported by easy-to-reference documentation. Leveraging this new model creates a more seamless way to create functions, while the underlying experience for monitoring, debugging, and deployment remains the same. Serverless and Cloud Native brings even more productivity and acceleration to today's app. Right, Kamala? Absolutely. Yes, we meet customers and application workloads wherever they are, and also help them access new capabilities through a wide range of tools and services to support their Cloud Native journey. Solutions like AKS, Azure Container Apps and Azure Functions abstract away common developer challenges like managing infrastructure to deliver a more seamless and productive Azure experience. It's all about finding the right balance between control and productivity for your app. Cloud native services on Azure go beyond containers and serverless to APIs and data ecosystems for seamless integrations. As the customer goes through their cloud native journey, they have many choices to start to modernize. Azure provides all that is needed to build, create, and run the next cloud native app with managed databases and high quality vision, speech, language, and decision-making AI models. And with Azure Arc, you have many choices for where you can deploy your cloud native applications. AKS on Azure, on Windows Server, on Azure Stack at CI, on Windows devices on Windows IoT and more. This brings us to the end of the session. For further deep dive on cloud native application development with Azure, check out the hybrid Ask the Expert sessions as well as the expert meetup available on site. There are also technical skilling labs available for Azure Kubernetes service and Azure Container Apps for you to experience hands-on cloud native development on site. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.